Woodworking kind of saved my life. I first stumbled into woodworking in 1993. I had just been married to my high school sweetheart and we were sophomores in college and going to school full time. And we kind of accidentally stumbled into it together. Um, We just bought a cockatiel just like a little bird, like a cockatoo. And we wanted to build a bigger cage for it. We didn't have much money, but we had a cordless drill that I'd gotten for Christmas from my in-laws. And we spent a little bit of our hard-earned money on an oscillating sander. We had a handsaw and some screwdrivers too. And we built this giant castle for this little bird. <laughs> We had a really good time with it. Um, It was kind of a little stress relief, and it showed me that I like to design things and work with my hands. And so from there, woodworking kind of became a real creative outlet for me. We lived in an apartment, and so we didn't have our own garage, so I would just work out on the driveway Eventually we moved into a house, but it didn't have a garage. In, in fact, it didn't even have a driveway, so I just had to work in the front yard. The neighbors were always asking me what I was up to. They probably didn't like when I got a table saw. <laughs> that was probably pretty loud. But college ended up being a little bit more stressful for me than I thought it would be. I changed majors three times. The thing was, is I always knew that I wanted to go to college. I appreciated what college meant. But I felt this burden that what I was learning in college, I should definitely take seriously so that I could apply it to the rest of my life, the rest of my career, the rest of my work years. And so I was pretty stressed out about that. Changing majors did not help. And so woodworking was really something that I could turn to and say, hey, at least I'm doing this. And sometimes my, my approach to it was way too output driven. It was more concerned with what things were looking like or, or rather what things would look like when they were finished. And so I kind of rushed through some steps. It wasn't until I took a senior... A class my senior year at college, uh, a woodworking class that I really learned some things that still took me 20 years to be able to apply. Um, it was a really good class. They had all the tools, the saws and the routers and the horizontal sanders and the planers, giant surfacers. It was just amazing. And I was able to learn more about the process of picking the wood and aging the wood and it was there that I learned that it was all about the sanding. You, know, you can cut everything to size and make sure it all fits together and have amazing joints, but if you haven't sanded it right, the end product isn't going to look so great. Um, we went on and continued to live in apartments, and sometimes I wasn't able to do the woodworking that I wanted to. Uh, we had a friend once that let me use their garage for a Christmas present that I was making, and that was amazing. I, I remembered how much I loved woodworking. You go to work and sometimes you forget things. And I definitely have forgot what was going on there. And so if there's any kind of a perspective I took from all this is that um, life is long. And the person that you are, especially like in woodworking, but also in life, it's a mixture of where you've spent your time and where you want to be, the person you are now and who you want to become. When those attributes line up, life is amazing. It can feel euphoric. But when those perspectives don't line up, life can feel chaotic. So my advice is don't focus on where you're at now, but instead try to think about how your current situation can help you eventually arrive at where you want to be. Then be patient and know that each step, no matter how small, 
is really important. The results are important, but the res- good results only come with an appreciation for that process. So hang in there. Keep up the good work. You're doing great. This time, though, you do get to see the results. Doesn't this cutting board look really good?